Today we're going to be discussing what I wish I knew then that I know now as a venue owner. Hi, I'm Bonnie Hawthorne. I'm a venue coach consultant for new and would-be venue owners. So today I want to discuss with you the things that I've learned in my years as a venue owner. Uh, I started out at a very intimate outdoor venue. Uh, I was offered this opportunity by someone who had a garden uh, that needed a little bit of revamping and um, it was just sitting kind of unused. And they offered me the opportunity to operate it as a venue. Of course, I jumped right at it. So my first thing I wish I would have done that I would always do now that I didn't do then was research. I did not research, I did not go to zoning to see if it was properly zoned as it had been operating as a social club. So therefore I assumed that it was all right to operate it as a venue. No, it wasn't. There's is two different zoning permits and zoning rules and regulations for a social club versus a venue. So after operating this venue for a couple of years, it being very successful, I go to, and I'm paying sales tax, everything, doing everything by the rules, uh, had a multitude of different venues. I found out when going to get my license, the venue is not properly, it's not properly zoned to operate as a venue. Oh, big mistake. All right, uh, once I started researching to see what I needed to do to ef uh, effectively and efficiently run it as a venue, it would have taken several months to do. So they closed this down until we had it up to par where it could operate as a venue. I had to make really quick adjustments. I had to find a location to move the events that were already on the books. Thank God I had a property that was already zoned. My home was already zoned for uh, a venue, for the use of a venue, uh, which worked out really great because we lived on a waterfront property. It had outdoor garden, which was just as lush and beautiful as the one that we were operating as a venue. So it all panned out. But could you just imagine? And plus, had I been fined on top of uh, everything else for operating pretty much illegally. Um, so um, we were able to escape that, which was a blessing in disguise. And so, like I said, we moved it to our property, which ended up being a better location anyway. So that saved us. So that's why I'm always harping on you to go to zoning, make sure it's properly zoned. A lot of property owners will tell you, oh yeah, it's zoned, don't even worry about it. That's because they want the rents, you know? So do your due diligence and do your research on your own to make sure that it's properly. Uh, Cause like I said, we could have been penalized for thousands of dollars, if not more. Um, so I'm gonna be looking down at my notes because I don't wanna get off the track and I want to make the best use of our time together. So the second thing I would say is that not only do you want to research Get the property to see if it's properly zoned, but you need to research your market. I too owned a rental company. And so I like really nice things. I like luxury items. I like couture fabrics and textiles and things of that nature. Well, before I even re could research my market, I'd already bought these things and I thought I could use them in my venue. Well, it wasn't need warranted in my market. It didn't, my market did not suffice these kind of things. They, polyester, believe it or not, was what my market deemed uh, appropriate for events and, and things of that nature. So in saying that, before you go off and you buy all these luxury stainless steel tables, these old back chairs and infinity chairs, and make sure that that's what will sell or you can use in your market. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's really a waste of money. If it doesn't, it's going to sit in your warehouse. It's going to sit somewhere not used or people are going to say, this is not go, this doesn't go with my theme and they go out and rent other things and you just, you're stuck with this equipment. So make sure you research that as well, because like I said, I could have saved myself thousands of dollars, even for my rental company, uh, had I done the research and understood my market much better. Um, and so as while we're on um, equipment, also, like I said, I spent a lot of money on things I didn't use. And had I known about a Facebook group called Events Rental Unclassified, it would save me money. So in this Facebook group, you can go there. There's a lot of rental companies or venues or other businesses selling items like chairs, tables, linens, any uh, stainless, I mean, 
flatware, anything glassware, anything that you can think of that you need uh, in the events industry, someone in there is selling it, tents, whatever. So I would um, say go to that group, see what um, they're selling, and just go from there you know and another thing because i did buy some things from that group so i just want to caution you as well know the quality of the product if you are purchasing let's say um shibari chairs there are different type of shibari chairs there's wood there's metal and there is resin and there is a resin plastic. I knew that there was a resin. I didn't know that there, there was a difference between a resin plastic and a resin. I bought resin plastic. They don't last. They're going to break. They don't sustain over a long time. So and I don't care if people telling you they have a metal core in the inside. If they're the plastic resin, they are not going to last. And I don't care if they tell you they're solid they are not going to last. The wear and tear that people put on your equipment, those will not last. So make sure that you're gonna get something that's durable, that's just gonna sustain the lifetime of your venue. Of course, at some point, you're going to have to change out furniture. That's just normal. Things get broken, but you wanna start at least with something quality. So therefore, I say to you, which I did not do, which was another lesson I learned, go if you can lay eyes, lay eyes on the equipment sit in it, tug on it, whatever you need to do to make sure that it is going to last for a while, it is durable, and it is sturdy. This is going to save you money. And also, like I said, in this group, that will save you money as well, not having to go out and buy new items. But if you do need to buy new items, then maybe uh, go to one of the ARA conventions. That's American Rental Association. And you can see a plethora of you know, wholesalers there that sell their goods and their wares and um, you can purchase from them. That's if you have the resources to do it. But also you can go to local rental companies that may be uh, getting rid of old equipment, purchasing new, but again, I caution you to make sure that it's sturdy and sustainable. Okay, like I said, <laughs> I learned the hard way and that's why I'm sharing it to, with you guys so that you don't go down this road and lose a lot of money. The next thing is a business plan. Yeah, you say, this chick, she got an MBA. <laughs> she didn't have a business plan? No, I wrote out notes, right? I wrote out notes. And had I had a full blown, because I didn't need, I felt I didn't really need a business plan because I didn't, um, I wasn't gonna have any uh, investors. So I just jot down little notes. Never again will I do that. I will always have a full blown business plan because one, had I researched everything, the location and everything in depth, the licensings, everything like that, I would have known the property was not zoned properly, okay? There was things that, you know, of course I pivoted along the way, you know, had I had a business plan, I could have an A, B, C, D option for if I needed to pivot. You know, like I said, thank goodness, uh, things panned out the way they did. So you always want to have something and I'm not saying it has to be, you know, a 15, 20, 30 page uh, business plan unless you're getting um, going for uh, loans or you're getting investors or things like that because business plans are forever changing and you have to adjust them to the situation. Just like, you know, we had COVID. Anybody has a business know that we had to adjust. So if you had the business plan, you went in and tweaked your business plan. So just make sure that you have something because that's your roadmap to success. And like I said, I jotted little things down. I, I dotted my I's, but I certainly did not cross my T's and it, it could have cost me dearly. So please do have a business plan in place. Um, just, you know, like I said, it can be two to three pages, but you want to know your expenses. Um, and that's, you have to know your numbers. You have to know your money. So that's, that's very important. Like I said, um, lost a lot of money uh, because I didn't do the research. So we certainly don't want that for you. So um, learn by my mistakes. <laughs> okay. And um, another thing is, um, how did I go into like something like wedding MBA? Because you know, every year at wedding MBA, um, they have um, a venue section where you go in and they speak uh, uh, venues and different things that are coming out, new technologies, and just you learn a plethora of information. Um, so I was a wedding planner and I still am a wedding planner, but when I would go to wedding MBA, I would just go to things about weddings, 
right? I never went to things about venues because at that time I didn't own a venue, but had I gone to those um, uh, sessions that they, they hold, I would probably have saved myself a lot of money as well. So when I'm saying this, educate yourself. Go to these conferences and things and, you know, and even if it's not your genre, take a peek in in there. You know, if, if you're a wedding planner, um, go to see what the florists are talking about or go see what the venue, because you don't know what's going to, the future is going to hold for you. And at least you have some, uh, some sense of what direction to go in. So um, I, I definitely want to say that. Next thing is a big thing. And I know a lot of people operate it operate now without it you want to have a crm which is a customer relationship management tool so it it has it's like your workflow right it's a workflow tool that say for instance if you're away from your desk or you're away on holiday and and clients are constantly you know wanting information you can set this up where it's automatically responding to your clients while you're away I mean, even if you have a, a nine to five and this is your side thing, right? You don't want people um, just going somewhere else because you wasn't able to respond to them. And I was doing everything manually. I mean, everything manually, you know, things that people, my phones were ringing like crazy. Had I had um, my workflow automation set up, you know, they would have gone to the, fill out the contact form, 15 or 10 minutes later, boom, they would have got all the information. They get the information of what our operating hours, what our amenities are, what what times we do, what days and times we do tours. Um, it also gave them our house rules. So that saves a lot of time and takes a lot of, you know, things off of your plate. Uh, and then you're able to do other things. Had a CRM from the beginning, I probably would have made more money. I probably wouldn't lost clients because you know, I'm on the phone with this client, then another client's calling and you know, you can't switch over because this person doesn't feel like, you know, you think their event is uh, important and things of that nature. So those help save time and it just makes your processes more efficient and effective. Uh, and that's another thing, you have to have your processes in place. You just can't open up the door and say, hey, come on in, you know, and not knowing how long it's gonna take you to flip the room. Uh, do you have preferred vendors? Um, all these things really account. So make sure that you have those. And you know, and one thing I did, uh, which was a blessing, I interviewed vendors. You just don't get an email from someone and say, um, oh, I like to be on your preferred vendors list. You know nothing about this person. You know uh, not how they operate, what equipment and things they have. Um, you can Google checklists. Um, that'll tell you how to interview vendors. So you definitely want to interview those uh, vendors because you just don't want somebody that's coming in just to make money. They're just not bought into you know, your mission statement, what you provide and what your clients are needing, okay? So um, the next thing, oh, and as far as CRMs, I'm just gonna give you a few so you can research them. So there's HoneyBook, there's Triple C, there's Key, there's Zoho, Zipsado, and plus a plethora of others. It just depends on where you are in your venue journey, uh, how much you can afford, and the kind of automation that you're looking for, okay? So one of the most affordable ones is HoneyBook. Um, I think it's like $9 a month. We do have a link uh, that you can get a, a discount on it. Also, there's Triple C, which I don't have um, any kind of affiliation with them. They're more on the higher end, but they have a phenomenal amount of tools and services um, that you know will really set you up for success as well. So, you know, whatever your budget is, just research, um, and then you'll find what works best for you. Okay. Um, another thing, um, two years ago was a life change for my business. Um, I don't know if you know, but I have multiple businesses. I have a venue. I have um, a rental company. Um, I also have Airbnb um, and I coach. And I just started doing COVID because everybody was pivoting, right? So you had to find something to bring some in stream of income in, even though our venue was still successful because we do, we were allowed to do intimate weddings and um, elopements and things like that. So, but I started a beauty and health and skincare product company, which I can make all those things myself. So um, I, ha I have a VA and I have a business coach 
which was life-changing for me and allows me to do other things, right? So those are some of the things that you want to consider. My business coach, even though I hired her for wedding, my wedding planning company to help, help me take it to the next level, everything that I have learned from her, has I've been able to use it across the board, completely across the board. It revamped my life. It revamped my businesses. It, uh, just having a business coach was the best investment I have ever, and I truly mean this, ever made you want to uh, do make sure you have the right investments i've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on courses that have gotten me nowhere but my business coach she keeps me accountable she educates me she helps I, I can throw things back and forth with her to say hey i'd like to try this i'd like to try this and we kind of work through it right and so um it gives me a sounding board and plus she's honest and open and upfront with me and tell me i don't think that this is something you need to take on at this time stay focused let's get to the let's let's get smart and make our have a return on our investment in this before we go into this and so that has helped me a lot because uh i'm i'm really hyper and um I, I, my mind is constantly spinning about what business should i do next what should i do next what should i do next and people are always saying multiple streams of income yeah that's a great thing but let's get one thing right first before we go to the next. So, and a business coach can also do that. And I did mention a VA. So sometimes, you know, we all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. Um, I'm not a tacky person. I'm just not. My mind does not work like that. You know, uh, I can come up with business uh, ideals for you. I can teach you about business all day. But when you start talking about, you know, workflow automations, yeah, I can write my steps and the processes and things like that, but actually implement it, the tools and things like that to get it done, I'm not that girl. So I hired a VA that has a plethora of experience with, I mean, with, uh, she's very tech savvy. She's very good with graphic design. She has taught me so much. Now, I'm telling you, um, two years ago, mm, I was in a bad situation as far as technology is concerned. Now, I'm getting pretty good. You know, uh, there's some tasks that I used to delegate to her. Now I can do them myself. But once again, she saves me a lot of time because, you know, having four businesses, even with one business, you know, you still want to have that work-life balance. So, you know, delegate some of this stuff, outsource it, and it's it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're, you're not being, uh, you're not running your business properly. You're setting yourself up for success because you're taking some of your things off your plate so you can work on other areas to bring more revenue into your business. Okay, so those are some of the things that I've learned along the way. I wanted to share them with you. If you've enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to stay in the know, subscribe. You know, I look forward to speaking with you again next week when we do our weekly uh, videos. And if you have any questions or you'd like to schedule a strategy call, head on over to our website. We'd be happy to chat with you and get you started on your venue journey. Blessings.